I wish that we could all be together, but the circumstances of the world are preventing us from doing that. My prayer is that all of you are staying safe and healthy. Hear now this call to worship. Although we are separated by physical distance, we come together as one united body of Christ. Together, let us worship God, the source of our strength and our comfort. In terms of passing of the peace, those of you who are in homes with other people, I invite you to turn to those individuals and speak a word of peace to them. If you happen to be alone, take a moment to think about people who are important to you and offer a silent prayer of peace for those individuals. Our scripture lesson for today is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right, right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. So ends our reading. When I began thinking about the message that I would share during these challenging times, I was certain that I would have to abandon the lectionary readings and find a scripture that was more appropriate. And then I remembered that one of our lectionary readings for today is the 23rd Psalm. There could be no more fitting passage of scripture than this psalm. This psalm that many people memorized at an early age in life is often associated with funerals and memorial services. While that's an appropriate time to be reminded of God's guiding presence, this psalm offers reassurance every day of our lives. This psalm is often attributed to David as the author. If that's true, we know that David had experience as a shepherd we also know that David experienced many challenges in his life. The resounding message of this psalm is that God is with us every step of the journey, including the times when we are feeling isolated and alone. The author of the psalm likens these times to traveling through the darkest valley. Like the author, we are traveling through uncertain times. Some people are experiencing the emotional pain of being isolated from other people. Some are fearful about their finances and their future employment. Some are afraid of contracting COVID-19 while others are dealing with this terrible virus. As we travel through the darkest valley, it can feel as if no one will accompany us. It is here that the author makes a profound statement of faith saying, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God is present during these difficult times. The author concludes this psalm saying, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The word that the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible translates as mercy comes from the Hebrew word hesed. A better translation would be, Surely God's steadfast love with, is with me all the days of my life. This statement assures us that whatever fears or frustrations we are facing, we are not alone. God is with us. It is also good to remember that even though we may be separated from one another physically, we are still on life's journey together. 
If we had gathered in worship on March 15th, I was going to talk to the children about the collage that is behind me. If you've not seen this collage, it is a collection of photographs of people who have loved and served God through this church from its very beginning. It serves as a beautiful reminder of our connectedness. In the top right corner of the collage is a red heart that reads, Followers of the Way. This refers to how we, as a church, are following in the way of Jesus. To follow in the way of Jesus is to share God's love wherever we are. In the coming days, I encourage all of us to continue sharing God's love in every way we can. This includes being caring, patient, kind, and supportive. It also means being truthful and open about our feelings. Stay in touch with others through phone calls, writing letters, or communicating through social media. Do whatever you can to direct people to help that is available. Remember, you can contact me or any of our staff members here at the church, either through phone calls or through email. I conclude this message with this thought. If you've never memorized the 23rd Psalm or you've forgotten some of the words, consider spending some of your time in social isolation memorizing it. In the coming days, may the 23rd Psalm be a source of comfort and strength for you. Thanks be to God for this ancient psalm. Amen. I invite us now to gather our thoughts and our spirits together in a time of prayer. Shepherd and God, throughout our lives we face many challenges. Today, our entire world is faced with the dangers of a virus known as COVID-19. We pray for those for whom isolation, isolation is causing emotional distress. May they feel your peace and may they find ways to connect with others. We pray for all of the healthcare workers throughout the world whose profession puts them in harm's way. May they have the resources they need, and may they have the wisdom to care for those who are sick. We pray for those who have lost jobs and are faced with economic uncertainty. May governments and agencies be quick in responding to their needs. We pray for children and youth who are filled with uncertainty about school and other activities. May they find comfort in the support of the adults in their lives. And we pray, O oh God, for ourselves, knowing that this crisis is difficult for every individual. May the presence of your steadfast love help to ease our fears. Having shared these prayers on behalf of this scattered congregation, we enter into a moment of silent prayer. We now end this prayer, trusting that we belong to God and to one another. In unity, we offer the prayer that Jesus once shared, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I conclude this time of worship with this blessing that comes to us from a very familiar hymn. God be with you till we meet again. By good counsel guide you, uphold you. 
with a shepherd's care enfold you. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Wings of shelter safely hide you. Daily manna provide you. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. When life's perils thick confound you, put unfailing arms around you. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Keep love's banner floating o'er you. Smite death's threatening wave before you. God be with you till we meet again. And let us now go off to continue loving and serving in God's peace. Amen. <laughs>